Hello and welcome. My name is Dawson Church. I'm the author of several best-selling science books like The Genie in Your Genes and Mind Matter. I've also been involved in over 100 clinical trials over the last 20 years. And I really appreciate the perspective that science gives us on the current global crisis. There is a lot to be worried about right now. We have the economic crash going on. We have governments taking out trillions of dollars in debt, which we have to be repaid by our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and future generations. We have all manner of issues relating to the virus and people getting sick, people trying to avoid getting sick, people being quarantined, people having stay-at-home orders, whole sections of whole economy shutting down, and many heroic people risking their lives to help others stay safe. And this is producing a lot of mental strain on people. I've been shocked by the overwhelm some of my friends are facing. I have one longtime friend called Jim, his in his mid fifties. And I was so surprised because I've always thought of him as a very resilient person. But talking to him recently, he said that he and his wife are fighting almost every day. They're confined to their home, his working from home, and the tension between them is so great, either they're having flare-ups, he calls that the red zone, or they get so upset, so angry, that they can't even start to talk to each other. He thinks of that as the deep freeze, the blue zone. And so either they're in red or they're in blue, nothing like a normal middle ground. And it's causing a huge amount of strain on him. He actually told me he is having suicidal thoughts flash through his mind. Another friend of mine in France is a young mother. She's in her mid-20s, and she has three young children. But now, with the schools closed, all three children are at home all the time. They have a wide disparity of ages, and her husband also now is working from home. So suddenly, the whole family is thrown together in this pressure cooker, and the baby crying or the husband having frustration at work can rapidly produce what's called in my book, Mind Matter, emotional contagion. Researchers find that emotions are as contagious as the virus. So unhappiness, anger, resentment, fear, blame, all of these unhappy emotions can spread throughout families, through communities very, very quickly. And that pressure cooker of being thrown together with the emotions of people normally or with a few hours a day or maybe a few hours a week can become intense. It can be hard to deal even with the emotions of people you love. One of the very sad statistics reported in the New York Times is that domestic violence is up 27%. People thrown into that pressure cooker are having these conflicts, can't escape the way they normally would, and now they're taking it out on each other. Mental health experts are predicting another pandemic of anxiety, depression, and suicide in the coming months as people who just can't deal with all the frustration, all the fear, all the rage, all the uncertainty, all of the emotions bottled up inside of them aren't able to give vent to that and express all that emotion, get it out of them, and so they just implode. Every evening at 8 p.m., if you go outside, you'll hear hundreds of people howling. They literally walk outside their front doors and howl like wolves or coyotes to try and let go of some of that bottled up frustration, anger, anguish, fear that's built up over the course of each day. I'm going to show you a four minute clip from a famous movie called Network about a network anchorman who goes crazy at all of the tribulations in the world of his era in 1974 and gets mad as hell and says, I can't take it anymore. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. The dollar buys a nickel's worth. Banks are going bust. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street and there's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do and there's no end to it. We know. The air is unfit to breathe, and our food is unfit to eat. 
We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller, and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel-belted radios, and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to write. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. So, I want you to get up now. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. I want you to get up right now. Get up, go to your windows, open them, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Things have got to change. How many stations does this go out of I know it goes to Louisville and Atlanta. I'm not going to take this anymore. Then we'll figure out what to do about the depression and the inflation and the oil crisis. But first, get up out of your chairs, open the window, stick your head out and yell, and say, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Who are you talking talking to her. Are they yelling in Atlanta, Herb? Are they yelling in Atlanta, Ted? But first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I am as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. They're yelling in Baton Rouge. God damn it. Get up, get up, get up out of your Son of a bitch! We struck the mother low. Stick your head out of the window, open it, and stick your head out and keep yelling and yell, I'm as mad as hell. I'm not going to take this anymore. Just get up from your chairs right now. Go to Where the window. Where are you going? I don't want to see if anybody's yelling. Window, open it and stick your head out and yell and keep yelling. I'm... I'm mad as hell! How am I going to take this anymore? I'm mad as hell! I'm not going to take it anymore! I'm mad as hell! I'm not going to take it anymore! I'm mad as hell! I'm not going to take it anymore! I'm mad as hell! I'm not going to take it anymore! Do you get the raw emotion there? We need to let those emotions out individually for ourselves, for the health of the people around us as communities. We need to, need to let all those emotions out, but we need to do it in healthy and constructive ways. Maybe after weeks of sheltering in place, you're mad as hell and you just can't take it anymore. Maybe you feel all these bottled up emotions inside of you and there's no way to let them out. Maybe all the fear and anxiety and uncertainty is getting to you and robbing you of your mental health. It's so worth finding ways to release all that, all that emotion that's bubbling under the surface. I've also been really focused on how I personally can help. We've done some research over the last few years showing that if you learn to release those emotions, if you use tapping, if you use meditation, it literally drops your stress level and then your level of stress hormones like cortisol drop dramatically. When all of those stress hormones drop, other things rise. And we found that as cortisol goes down, levels of antibodies called immunoglobulins go up in your system. And these make you much more immune to bacteria, 
viruses and pathogens. So I've been looking for ways I can give people concrete tools that will help them deal with the challenges of the crises we find ourselves in right now. Now, to help those who are sheltering in place deal with all the emotions that can arise in those pressure cookers, in families, in people flung together for long periods of time, I've helped design a new workshop called Tapping in Place. Not sheltering in place, tapping in place. Tapping when you're in that situation to release all of those bottled up, pent up emotions before they explode in the form of arguments and fights and disagreements. I'm offering this workshop with a talented EFT Universe trainer called Jackie Vermontes. And we looked at all the topics we think you could most usefully tap on to surface those feelings and then to release those feelings. Among the topics we're covering in this brief one-day workshop are truly feeling your feelings, not being so afraid of those feelings that you're immobilized by fear at even dealing with your feelings, but actually feeling them deeply and giving them a space in your life. Also, a favorite method of mine called ranting and tapping, where you just alone, if at all possible, just let it all go, let it all out, scream and yell if you want to, swear, exaggerate, dramatize, but let those feelings out while you tap. Research shows that if you do this, then all the emotional centers of the brain, all the parts of the brain that hold emotion quickly discharge that emotion when you rant, but tap along with the rant. Also, how your childhood ways of handling emotion are actually conditioning your adult ways of expressing emotion today. Also, one of Jackie's methods she'll teach you is writing a letter. So finding that person that irritates you and actually writing all your resentments down, that tapping while you do it. Rather than sharing your resentments or expressing them, you write that letter while you tap. Another technique we'll teach is how to discharge intensity, emotional intensity. So when you have to talk to a family member, a team member, a friend, you aren't coming from a highly charged place. Also, tuning into signals of stress in your body. Often people are getting all stressed and they aren't tuning into their bodies. They don't realize how overwhelmed they are till they explode. So you want to tune in and listen to your body signals before they become explosive. Enhanced tapping techniques. We'll have you watch little videos. We will have you practice certain techniques that are really effective when regular tapping isn't enough. Also, what resentment and anger feel like in your body? Hot points that trigger you things people say in conversations or their behaviors that really trigger you and what to do about those, those moments when you're so triggered, you don't know what to do. Also, the very potent choices method. And finally, future pacing. Future pacing is thinking about how you will handle a situation in the future and using a sequence of ideas as you tap to set yourself up for success in the future encounters you have with those same people who've been triggering you up to this point. I'm going to end this video with a story about how I use these techniques with my wife today myself. So this morning before I made the video, I was having a conversation with my wife about some projects I had going at work. And she didn't seem very interested. She didn't really ask any questions. She didn't seem as though she had any real focus on what I was saying. So she then went about her business, went to, went to the store to do something. And I thought when she was gone, I need to have a serious conversation with her about this because she wasn't paying attention. She wasn't tuned into what I was saying. And this isn't a good way for us to be having our time together now that we're sheltering in place. But when she was gone, I began to think about all the techniques I've got queued up for you for this workshop. And after I'd used some of those techniques to let go, of that frustration and resentment, I realized, you know, she didn't seem very interested, but I probably didn't explain it all that well. It may have been that the issue, which I thought was her, actually was me. So when she got back, rather than having that charged conversation with her, I said to her, Donnie, I'd love to share with you more about this project I'm working on. I shared more information about the project, 
And she was fascinated. She asked questions, she was interested. And I realized that what I was thinking was her <laughs> was really me. And so it's amazing how when you use the, the, these techniques, you can create not that red zone of anger or that blue zone of frigid, icy contempt that people have in their homes, but this warm zone, the heart zone of love. I'd like to come and spend this day, this one day workshop with Jackie and I learning how to be in the heart zone, how to learn the crucible, learn to make the crucible of the current crisis and all of the stress it's putting on your relationships into a breakthrough method of finding ways of transmuting all of that emotional energy into love. You can do it. And then finally you find yourself what my wife and I call sheltering in love. So please come join Jackie and I for this one day workshop. Come find out how to shelter in love with us. Thank you so much.